All right, uh, we're going to be looking at the process of completing the square and graphing by completing the square. Uh, completing the square is the process of going from the standard form of a quadratic function into the vertex form of a quadratic function. So this here is completing the square. Uh, the advantage of completing the square, or one of the advantages of completing the square, is after you've completed completing the square, uh, you can then graph the quadratic function from vertex form, uh, which is much easier than graphing it from standard form. Uh, we're going to look at this first example, which says graph the function y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 by completing the square. Uh, so here is, again, the process of completing the square. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is if there is a value of a as a coefficient, we need to factor it out of the first two terms, or the quadratic and linear term. Uh, so that would look like this. y is equal to negative 2 uh, outside of x squared plus 2x, because factoring negative 2 out of negative 4x is positive 2x, and then plus 5. Uh, the next step is to actually complete the square and make a perfect square trinomial of the factor that is inside the brackets. So in order to do that, we need to add and subtract uh, the same value in order to not change the value of the expression or the function. Uh, in this case, that value will always be, or in this particular case, it's always half of the linear term squared. So it's half of 2 squared, which half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So that value here is going to be 1. Uh, the third step of completing the square is removing always the negative constant from the brackets by multiplying it by the coefficient. Uh, so that looks like this. y is equal to negative 2 outside of the factor x squared plus 2x plus 1. And now distributing the negative 1 out, it becomes a positive 2, and then plus 5. Uh, our last steps or step is just tidying it up. This here is now a perfect square trinomial. It is x plus 1 times x plus 1, which you could test by uh, expanding and simplifying. And then collecting these like terms, this is plus 7. So our completed square is y is equal to negative 2 outside of x plus 1 squared plus 7. Uh, the vertex here is at negative 1, 7, which is right here. Uh, the multiplier of negative 2 is now going to mean that the quadratic function opens down and all of the perfect squares are going to be doubled. So in other words, this distance here, when I go over 1, I'm going to go down 2, because that is uh, double the perfect square of 1. 1 squared is 1, double that is 2. Uh, the next point will be uh, over 2 and down 8, because I'm doubling what 2 squared is. So that is going to be 8. Uh, so that point is here. And finally, if I wanted to, uh, when I go over 3, I would go down 18 because that's double 3 squared. Uh, and down 18 would look something like, well, that's a little bit off my screen, this. Uh, and based on symmetry, we can fill in the other points, which are here, here, and here. So there is my function that I've created by completing the square. Uh, we'll do one more with a decimal multiplier, or a decimal a value. So here's the next example. And what it says is, graph the function y is equal to 0.5 x squared mi minus 6x plus 18 by completing the square. So the exact same process uh, repeated. Uh, when we begin to complete the square or factor out uh, the 0.5, from the linear and quadratic term, we're left with x squared. And in this case, negative 6 divided by 0.5 is actually negative 12x, and then leave the constant out of it. Our next step is to create a perfect square trinomial by adding and subtracting the same value inside the brackets. In that case, that value is going to be 
again, half of negative 12 squared. Negative, half of negative 12 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Step number 3. We have to distribute the negative constant term out of the brackets. And that looks like negative 36 times 0 0.5 is negative 18, and then plus 18. And when we collect the like terms and simplify this and factor, uh, we're left with y is equal to 0 0.5. This is a perfect square trinomial of x minus 6 times x minus 6. And these become absolutely nothing. Uh, so our completed square is y is equal to 0 0.5 x minus 6 squared. Uh, in graphing this, our vertex is going to be at 6 and 0. And all of the perfect squares will be cut in half. So it's going to look like this. As I move over 1, I'm going to move up half of 1 squared, which is half. As I move over 2, I'm going to move up half of 2 squared, which is actually just 2. When I move over 3 from the vertex, I'm going to move up half of 3 squared, which is 4.5. And when I move over 4 in either direction horizontally from the vertex, I'll go up half of 4 squared, uh, which is 8. So my function looks something like this. So as you can see, there are many advantages to completing the square. And one of them is having the ability to graph the quadratic function.